like to come in here very low key. We wanted to make a low key appearance. Did anybody notice the helicopter flying a little low and real slow? Now, greatest pilots in the world, greatest equipment in the world. That's what we have. Greatest equipment in the world. But the greatest pilots, nobody can do what our pilots could do, right, Mike? Hello, Pennsylvania. Hello, Pennsylvania. Eight days from now, can you believe it? Eight days. Started off four years ago, remember our meetings and our, it was a love fest right from the beginning, wasn't it? And now it's more so. You know what? It's more so than it was four years ago. And they're going to be finding that out very soon. They're going to be finding it out. You know, I have, I have the ratings right over here. Uh, Poll numbers. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, Joe Biden, you know, sleepy Joe Biden said a little while ago, he was, he was in a lid. You know what a lid is? A garbage can. They put the lid on it. They put the lid. And he saw we had two of these today. They were fantastic. Different parts of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, right? And we had two of them. And Sleepy Joe was down there and they said, you got to get out of this basement. So he traveled from Delaware to a little tiny corner of Pennsylvania, like right next to Delaware. And he made a speech. And he said that he doesn't do these kind of rallies because of COVID, you know, because of No, he doesn't do that because nobody shows up. That's why. Nobody shows up. COVID, COVID, COVID. That's all they talk about, the fake news. COVID, COVID, COVID. That's all they talk about, what progress we've made on it, too. We understand it. We know we have to protect our seniors, especially when they have heart, when they have diabetes problems. And we are protecting them. We have the best testing in the world. That's why we show so many cases, because we do more testing than anybody else. But we're doing great. And, uh, oh, excuse me. Here I am, right? I'm here for you. Right? I didn't feel so good one day. One day I didn't feel exactly great, Mike, our great congressman. But I didn't feel exactly great. And uh, I said, what's the story, Doc, sir? You've tested positive. I said, positive for what, Doc? Tell me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I say this, a, a president, you're doing your job. You can't stay in the basement of the White House. You can't stay in a basement. You can't stay in a beautiful bedroom upstairs. You can't do that. You got to do your job. And I, I'd have many days I'd say, no, I haven't met a lot of people today. There's got to be something going. But one day they came back. And these doctors were so great. And there are a lot of them. There's so many doctors, you know, when you're president. There's so many doctors. And I had 12 doctors. Can you believe it? I've never had 12. I've had one or two, but I've never had 12. And each one was a specialist, different parts of the body. And they would grab my body and I hated it. I hated it. I said, get your hands off me, doctors. But let's make me feel good. And we took something that was like incredible, Regeneron. And I don't know, maybe I would have just been perfect just by doing nothing. But who the hell wants to take a chance? And I woke up the next morning and I felt like Superman. Hmm. Get me back, get me back, get me back. And the first lady had it, right? First lady had it and she did great. She's great. She's, and she is popular too. She, people like her. They love, they love Melania, but she had it. Doesn't complain about things. And then of course, uh, Baron had it. Now with Barron, you know, young, strong, immune system, he had it. I said, what's the story, Doc, with Barron? Sir, he tested positive. Like 15 minutes later, how's Barron doing? Sir, it's gone. <laughs> so you have to get back to school. We have to get back to school, Pennsylvania. You know, you have a governor. You have a governor. You have a governor who doesn't, you know, want us to do anything in Pennsylvania because did you see the poll just came out? We're up two and another one we're up four. Yeah. Because you watch, I have a whole list of the polls that just came out. 
But eight days from now, we're going to win the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we're going to win four more years in our great White House. Just a few hours from now, the Senate will vote to confirm Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the United States Supreme Court. That was a good choice, wasn't it? I've never seen any. I'm glad she's not running for president. I'd much rather go against Sleepy Joe. Much easier. Now she's fantastic. A fantastic person, fantastic woman, a great student. Her professor, her great professor at Notre Dame said, and he's been teaching a long time, a lot of great legal minds he's taught. He said she's the single greatest student he's ever had. That was good enough for me. That was a highly respected person. He's a highly respected man. He said, sir, she's the greatest student I've ever had. Judge Barrett is one of our nation's most brilliant legal minds. She'll defend our rights, our liberties, and our God-given freedoms. And you saw that. And we were all watching in great amusement as she was so-called grilled by the opposition. That was easy, right? That was easy. That was like one of our great football teams from the area, plenty of them, playing a high school football team. That was really something. Judge Barrett will be the third Supreme Court justice, along with almost 300, right around the number. By the time we end the first term, I'll have 300, maybe a little more, maybe a little less federal judges that we've confirmed to uphold our laws and our Constitution. As well. And part of that was that Barack Hussein Obama allowed me to have 142. We started with 142 empties. I don't think anybody's ever had one. You don't do that. But he left me 142. Couldn't get them confirmed. To this day, Joe Biden refuses to release his list of names. Got to lift, you know, it's more than just a pack in the court. He's got to say, who's he going to put on? Because we can't have radical left justices that are going to destroy our nation. And we will be very, very careful as to who we choose. You know, I left a list of 45. I had a list of 25. And now I added 20 names to all top scholars, top, top scholars. And Amy was one of them, took Amy off. And the fact is, you have no idea. A lot of people say I won because of the Supreme Court, because they didn't know who I'd pick. And I gave a list, and I said, I'll pick somebody like this. And then they said, that's not good enough. Got to pick somebody in that list. So ultimately, it's a list of 25 all great scholars, all people that believe in something known as the Constitution, if that's OK. I don't think his list will. And they say that that was a big part of the reason that we won the election four years ago. And he has to do the same thing. He's got to not only agree to not pack the court, or you can't put him on, it would be terrible, terrible for our nation. Even Justice Ginsburg said you can't do that. You can't have nine is the right number. We have a Senate. We have a House, a lot of people. Nine is the right number. Nine great people, that's the right number. But he's got to agree to not pack the court. But he's got to agree to give us a list of five or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. Got to have people to pick from. And if you don't have that list, you can't vote for them. And you can't vote for them for another reason. Because during the debate, I'm sure nobody watched the debate. Did anybody watch the debate? Remember? The last question was like Perry Mason. It was just like Perry Mason. It was at the end. He was doing great. This guy was doing so wonderful. Not really. I mean, you know. Meaning he was getting through. And then the last one, I said, uh, so you don't want oil, Joe? Well, uh, yes, we want to get ourselves off of oil. And how about Kristen, who I thought treated me good? I really did. I thought she, compared to Chris Wallace, much better, right? Chris Wallace, I was fighting two people. But no, I thought she treated us good. And frankly, she went in and she said, why did you say that to him? And that's when he really blew it. So basically, he's not going to allow you to frack. And you have a million jobs, energy jobs, probably more than that. And it's a big part of our nation, what you do. People don't realize that about Pennsylvania, but fracking is a very big deal. Who are you pointing to? Oh. Oh. Oh, look at that. Whoa.
Oh boy, the coal miners, right? The coal miners. Dig we must. Dig we must. Clean coal. I don't call it coal. I call it clean coal. They can do more with coal now. Thank you very much. Remember when Hillary, she said, we will stop all coal miners. We will never dig coal again. And then four weeks later, she ended up in West Virginia. That did not work out well for her. That was not good. Remember, she was trying to explain that she was just kidding, just like, just like he's doing, just like Sleepy Joe's doing. He was just kidding, but he's down. And if that doesn't win us, we just had a poll come out. We're plus two now, you know, we, but we should be a lot more than that. I'm not happy with plus two. I don't like plus two. It's an honor. You do a great job. Dig we must. Dig we must. And we brought it back. We're selling now coal to Vietnam and many, many places from, uh, are you coal miners from Pennsylvania? Good. Good. That's good. Well, you're not going to be voting for Joe Biden, that I can tell you. Not like he's a sophisticated environmentalist. He was told to do this. Our opponent's agenda is one of doom and gloom and depression, decline and despair. Our agenda is one of unlimited optimism. We want to be optimistic. Remember during the debate, he said it will be a dark winter. No, it's going to be a beautiful winter. It's going to be a beautiful spring. Okay, our country is coming back stronger than anybody would have thought. And you have to get your governor to open up your state, what this guy is doing. You know, we had one site where we had a site, it was a big site, beautiful site, and he made sure that they didn't do it. We had to go around scouting out for sites on our first, this is my third one, all in Pennsylvania. But this governor, uh, but we're going to remember it. But the problem is, how is he going to be the one when he tries to play games with sites that counts ballots, right? He counts ballots. It's the governor. And then they sued us because they didn't want to have poll watchers. You know what a poll watcher is? They watch you count the votes. What's wrong with that if you're doing it straight? So we're in court and we had a Pennsylvania judge who said, oh, you shouldn't have poll watchers. Can you believe that? We actually lost the first case, but we'll go up and we'll end up in the Supreme Court. The other thing, they want to be able to drag out the election long beyond the third. Well, in all fairness, this is a very important place, right? And we can't drag it out. We don't want to drag out any longer. So we are in lots of court having to do with this and having to do with many states, about five of them. And so far, we've had a lot of good victories and will continue because we're not going to let this election be taken away from us. That's the only way they're going to win it. We're not going to let it happen. For the last half century, 47 years, Joe Biden has been outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in ridiculous, endless foreign wars. Countries you never even heard of for the most part. Now Joe Biden is trying to ban fracking and deliver an economic death sentence for Pennsylvania's energy sector. You can't you can't allow this to happen. But here's the thing. For a year, I watched him saying, there will be no fracking, right? We saw so with the Democrats, right? The radical left Democrats. There will, they're all screaming, no fracking, every one of them. They couldn't scream loud enough. Then he gets a nomination because Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas, refused to get out. <laughs> now, had she gotten out, then Crazy Bernie would have been our opponent. But I, I think I like Joe better because there's no energy. I like to. No, Bernie had a little energy, small base, lots of energy. And we had a lot of his people, you know, a lot of them with Crooked Hillary. Bernie, he gets, I, I won't use it because you have very young people here. He gets taken advantage of by Hillary. And then he gets taken advantage of by the Democrats the last time with mostly Elizabeth Warren and the others that ganged up on him. And he goes back and he goes into the Senate. I think he's the greatest loser. He's a really good He's a good loser. He's a good sport. Crazy Bernie. And in the last week's debate, Joe Biden confirmed his plan to abolish the entire U.S. oil industry. That's right. And that's why Kristen said, why are you doing this? Because she's on his side, you know, because that's NBC. Owned by Comcast, C-O-N, not C-O-M, C-O-N. So she's on his side. She's saying, why are you doing this? If you really look, it's almost pleading. Sir, why are you doing this? And I'm saying, just be quiet, Chris. 
No, that's what happens. That's right. That's what happened to Perry Mason. Remember, the guy was always great, great, great. Then at the end, I did it, I did it. There was that was Sleepy Joe. That's what I. You don't need a president like that. That means no fracking, no natural gas, no coal, no jobs, no energy, no Pennsylvania families being well taken care of. Fracking is saving Pennsylvania families two thousand five hundred dollars a year, at least. And it's saving families all over the country. We are energy independent, and you're a big part of it. And they want to end that. They want to go to wind. Do you love wind? A nice windmill right alongside of your house. Your house is now worthless. You know, when those windmills go up and they're near your house, I know a lot about wind. It costs many, many, many times the energy that we're talking about. Many, many times, like 32 cents versus three cents whether it's natural gas or other things, but many, many times. But you put up a windmill, if you want to see a bird graveyard go under a windmill sometime, you will see a grave, you will see it kills your birds. You've got a lot of problems, okay? And it needs subsidy, massive subsidy. You don't want to be giving subsidy to energy when there's no reason to do it. So he wants wind and he wants solar. I like solar too, but it still isn't developed. And solar's not gonna power your big, powerful plants which we have to have in order to compete and beat the rest of the world. It's just not going to do it. And neither is wind. And neither is wind. He will eradicate Pennsylvania energy production and send your state into a crippling depression. That's what's going to be because energy is such a big. People just don't know that, Mike, about Pennsylvania. It's a big, big energy state. Be amazed. You know, it's funny, Texas. So he's against oil. He's against guns, Second Amendment. And he's against God. So he goes, and then they say, President Trump is four points up in Texas. And the governor calls me from Texas, great guy, Greg. He said, sir, that's not true. You're up a lot. But they don't say that. But think of it. You're against oil. We're in Texas. You're against oil. You're against God. You're against guns. In Texas, guns in Texas. Trump is up four points. It's a very close race. No, no, same thing here because you have the same thing. And you could really say the same thing, almost to a little bit lesser extent. But the Texas was just amazing. So that's why I said at the end, Texas and Pennsylvania, I hope you're looking, and I hope you're listening. And that goes for Ohio, and it goes for Oklahoma, and it goes for a lot of other places. So, you know, we had polls because the fake news is always given fake numbers, you know, they're called they're really called the suppression, suppression polls. So here, here they are, all brand new. Uh, Rasmussen, did you ever hear of Rasmussen? Very highly regarded poll. So over there, we're at 53 and 52. That means it's hard to lose you when you're at 53 or 52. So Rasmussen, we're, and that's national. That's not, you know, what I'm doing. I go to places like Hillary used to campaign in California when it doesn't matter. Although, if I were California, I'd vote for Trump because the place is going to hell. All right. I would vote for Trump. I would vote for Trump. Taxes are too high. Crime is too high. New York, taxes are too high. People are fleeing. Crime is too high. I put out, vote for Trump. Remember? African-American, I said the same thing. Vote for Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? That was last election. Now, we are doing so incredibly well with the African-American, the black community, and the Hispanic community. No, it's unbelievable. They get it. Because we did criminal justice reform, we did prison reform, we did the historically black colleges and universities. What we've done, Opportunity Zones with the great Tim Scott, Senator from South Carolina. We've done so much, and now the black community is strong with us. We had a poll today at 40. 40. Nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows what that means. That's a number that nobody's heard of with respect to the Republican. We should be much higher than that. Joe Biden is a diehard globalist who wiped out your steel mills, closed down your factories, killed your coal jobs, outsourced your industries, and supported every terrible and disastrous trade deal for more than 47 years. He was a cheerleader for NAFTA, one of the worst trade deals ever made. By the way, USMCA just kicked in. It's great. 
USMCA is a great deal, just kicked in. Your companies aren't going to be moving to Mexico or Canada anymore. That I can tell you. Biden enthusiastically voted for China's entry into the World Trade Organization, decimating your manufacturing and enriching China at your expense. And you were really one of the biggest victims. This state, you lost 50 percent of your manufacturing jobs after Biden's NAFTA and China disasters. They were disasters. He signed it along with other people, but he was one of the people that pushed it. Decade after decade, vote after vote, Sleepy Joe Biden has betrayed Pennsylvania. You know that. He repeatedly tried to cut Social Security and Medicare. You didn't know that until a week ago when we started showing you the clips. And that was Bernie Sanders is the one that exposed him on that. Now, after years of economic treachery, he wants to ban fracking and he's going to. And what about his running mate, his wonderful running mate? They asked her about fracking. She's only said about 300 times there will never be fracking. Now she said, no, Joe wants it, right? But she said it was the Harris-Biden administration. That's the first time I've ever heard of that one. She came first. No, she's nothing special. She never was. I can't believe she was picked, actually. Nobody treated him worse than her. Plus, she was a disaster. Her poll numbers were going so bad. She left before Iowa, right before the vote. Her poll, she started off at like 12, and then she went to 10, went to 8, went to 7, went to 5, went to 4, went to 2, went to 1, went to 0. Then she said, I think I'm going to get out of the race. And she treated him so badly, what she called him and everything else. And then he said, I'd like to announce that I'm going to pick Kamala to be my running mate. You can have them both. You don't have to take my word. We have Joe on tape. Now, I only do this when a location is very important to me, because this thing costs a fortune putting up this tape, okay? But look at this crowd, so you can watch what Joe says. Go ahead, please, roll the video. My problem is, I voted for NAFTA. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on uh, international trade matters. When you ran for president, and when Barack Obama ran for president, you both said you would renegotiate NAFTA. You didn't. Trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which forced American workers to compete against people who are making pennies an hour, has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs. The president is absolutely right when he says that China has been cheating for 25 years and that Bill Clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it, George W. Bush didn't do enough about it, Barack Obama didn't do enough about it. What, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? The rise in China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. The rise in China is a positive, positive development. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. We want to see China rise. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the continued expansion. China is not our enemy. We talk about China. As our competitor, we should be helping. The idea that China is going to eat our lunch is bizarre. The idea that they are our competition, they're going to beat us, is bizarre. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. They're not bad folks, folks. China's not a problem. Allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported, extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported, that those steps allowed China to take advantage of the United States by using our own open trade deals against us. No, Do you think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. Today we're finally ending the NAFTA nightmare and signing into law the brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Very special. Listen, it's hard to overstate the importance of the USMCA. Uh, this is the single biggest bipartisan legislative victory for this president and this administration. It is a huge deal. Wage growth is better than it has been since 2009. That means it is better than it has been for seven out of eight of the years that Obama was president. The new USMCA has powerful protections to keep auto manufacturing jobs. Since the election, we've created 41,000 brand new motor vehicle and parts jobs. 
But doesn't he deserve some credit for that? It's better. The USMCA is better than NAFTA. It is better than NAFTA. I have never said I oppose fracking. You said it on I, tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel. No more, no new fracking. I'd gradually move away from fracking. And I think it's critically important on day one that we end any fossil fuel leases on public lands. Uh, well, like, what about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. pipeline infrastructure yes. and, pipeline. and, and, exactly. and... They, they want to do the same thing I want to do. They want to phase out fossil fuels, and we're going to phase out fossil fuels. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. I have one final would question. Would you close it down falls, the oil industry? It falls. Or would you close it down falls. the oil industry? By the way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I will transition. That is a big In statement. terms of business, that's the biggest statement. Okay. Because basically what he's saying question, is he is Mr. going President? to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President. never heard me say that that I can tell you now isn't that great it's a very expensive deal but it saves me a lot of work because there's nothing does it better than that right a vote for Biden is a vote to offshore your jobs ban fracking and deliver economic ruin to Pennsylvania and to your families in 2016 Pennsylvania voted to fire this corrupt far-left political establishment and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. With your vote, we will continue to fight for American workers, lower drug prices. You know what we're doing on drug prices? Had the first year in 52 years where drug prices came down, prescription drugs last year. But we're doing favored nations, so we pay the lowest in the world. Right now we pay the highest. And the drug companies don't like me too much, I can tell you that. They're spending more on advertising than Sleepy Joe. Support our police, protect our Second Amendment, which is under siege. <laughs> Defend our borders, maintain energy independence, and ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA, right? <laughs> we will deliver record prosperity, epic job growth, a safe vaccine that quickly ends the pandemic, and we're rounding the turn. They hate it when I say it, with or without. We have the vaccine. It's going to be great. We have numerous companies, all great ones, but we're rounding that turn anyway. We're rounding the turn. We understand the disease. We closed it up. The greatest economy in history. We closed it up. We saved 2 million lives. Remember, it was going to be 2.2 million lives. We saved 2 million lives, and we're rounding the turn. Normal life. That's what we want, normal life. We'll fully resume. We'll never forget what China did to this country or what China did to the world. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. And that's where we're heading. If you look at the job numbers, automobile numbers, if you look at housing, I gave working families record-setting tax cuts. And in my second term, I will cut middle-class taxes even further. Give you the largest tax cut. The largest tax cut in history. This is the craziest campaign, right? So all my life I watch politicians running. They always say, we are going to cut your taxes, right? We are going to cut your taxes. I got a guy running now who's sort of shot. He goes, we will raise your taxes. I said, what the hell? I said, did he just say that? Yeah, he's going to give you the biggest tax cut in the history of our country, including regulations and all the other stuff which made it so good for us.
This election is a choice between a Trump super recovery or a Biden super depression. And that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a depression if you go with this guy. It's a choice between a boom and a lockdown. He wants to lock down your country. You're already locked down with your governor. Wolf, Governor Wolf, here's a beauty for you. Sure, Governor, we trust you to count our ballots, Governor. We trust you. And it's a choice between the rule of the people or the rule of the corrupt political class. If Joe Biden and the Democrat Socialists, and that's where you're heading. And I always said, this country will never be a socialist country. Never, ever, ever be. But if Joe Biden and his Democrat Socialists are elected, they will delay the vaccine, delay the therapies, prolong the pandemic, close your schools. They're already closed. Open them up. Open up those schools and shut down our economy. And we're doing we're coming back with numbers like nobody has ever seen before. I tell this last week, the end of last week, the Atlanta Fed projected GDP for the third quarter. Just it's going to be announced just before November 3rd of 35 percent. Nothing ever even close. I think your record is 8%, 8%, 9%, 35% that he wants to close it down. Not a good idea, Joe. Biden says he has a plan for the virus, and he doesn't. He just copied. You see what he did? He copied our plan. It's the same plan. He copied our plan. Everything he's proposed, my administration has already done, including mass production of rapid tests and PP, we've done. And what we've done with the ventilators is incredible. This, we weren't prepared with ventilators. Our hospitals didn't have them. Our governments didn't have them. Our federal government didn't. We went into a production of ventilators, the likes of which they've never seen anything like it since the end of World War II. Biden doesn't know how to defeat a pandemic. His own chief of staff said that when he managed the H1N1, which he always reverses, Swine flu, you know, the swine flu, a much less, much less lethal flu. It was an outbreak. We did, he said, quote, we did everything possible and we did everything possibly wrong. We were a disaster. 60 million Americans got H1N1 in that period of time. And it's just purely fortune that it wasn't a mass casualty. He said, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Now this guy comes in. He should have closed it down sooner, but two and a half months later, he was saying, I shouldn't have done the ban to China. I shouldn't have done the ban to Europe. If the H1N1 had the same fatality rate as the China virus, over two million people would have already perished based on the way they ran it. It was a disaster. And his own person said it. It was a total. He said, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. And now he's going to come in and help us. This guy can't help himself. In an interview that aired last night, Biden said he opposes letting young Americans resume their lives, which was an interesting statement. 99.98% of those under the age of 50 recover, and most recover very quickly. But Biden wants to keep them locked down in their homes while letting rioters and looters run wild. So in Pennsylvania, you can't go to church. You can't go to restaurants. You can't do anything, right? But if you want to have a nice little riot, if you want to have a protest, that's why we call everything a friendly protest. That way we're allowed to be. Think of it. You can't go to church, but if you want to burn down Center City, we have no problem with it. I'll tell you, we're bringing our country back. But if you think it's easy with these people we have to deal with, the Biden lockdown would crush America. And my plan will crush the virus, and we're going to have a boom like you've never seen before. Like you've never seen before. When the China virus arrived, we moved heaven and earth to fight the disease. We banned all sorts of things, everything we could ban. We airlifted medical supplies, built hospitals from scratch. Look what we did in New York, the convention center. 2,800 beds, then we put in the ship. Unfortunately, Governor Cuomo barely used it. If he would have used it for our great seniors, he wouldn't have caused the death of 11,000 people, seniors, and 40,000 people overall. Slashed red tape, pioneered groundbreaking therapies, reduced the fatality rate 85%. Think of that. 
think, think of it. I mean, look at Regeneron for me. And by the way, we're going to make Regeneron available to anybody that feels they want it, need it, same as I have, free, free. And the vaccines that are being produced, it's not your fault, it's China's fault. We're not forgetting. And the vaccine's going to be free. It's going to be distributed free to everybody. We will deliver 100 million doses of a safe vaccine before the end of the year. It may be quite a bit sooner than that. Seniors will be the first in line for the vaccine and our frontline workers too. I will break through every obstacle, which we've already done, use every resource and I will not rest until we eradicate this disease that should have never come to our shores or to the shores of the rest of the world, should have never come. Never forget, we will vanquish the virus and we will emerge better, stronger, and more unified than ever before. If Biden and the Democrat socialists are elected, they will raise your taxes to a level that you've never seen before, bury you in regulations, dismantle your police departments, dissolve our borders. They don't want borders, they want open borders. They even said, maybe we'll take down the wall, which is now Almost complete. You know, the wall is almost complete. Just what the Border Patrol, Border Patrol, I said, give me the best. Give me your specs. I said, let me use concrete plank. I want to use concrete plank. It's quick and it's cheap. They said, sir, we can't do that. We need steel, concrete, and then rebar. Oh, I said, that's great. We gave them everything they wanted. We're now beyond 400 miles and it'll be finished very soon. It's amazing. It used to be all about the wall. They never thought I'd get it, Bill. It used to be all about the wall because we had the Democrats would do anything not to have. Remember all the work and every day front page. The wall will not happen. It will not happen. Now that it's almost finished, you don't hear about the wall anymore, right? They don't talk about it. The, the fake news media doesn't talk about it. Look at how many there are over there, too. That's a, that's a lot of valuable equipment. That's a lot of, that's a lot of valuable equipment. And Mexico is paying for the wall, by the way, in case you had any question. That's the other thing. So now they know it's built. Then they said, but Mexico will not be paying for I said, no, no, Mexico is paying for the wall, okay? But they'll figure that out very soon. They'll confiscate your guns, terminate religious liberty, and destroy the suburbs. Women of the suburbs, you must love me, I can tell you. I'm saving you, suburbs. I'm saving. I got rid of the regulation that was going to destroy your suburbs. Unless you like crime, which you don't like, right? Now, they were doing a new thing about three, four weeks ago. They said, suburban women don't like Trump. He's losing suburban. I said, why? Wait. But that's only because I know two things about suburban women. They don't want a regulation that is brutal that's going to build low-income housing next to their house. Okay? They don't want that. A project. We call it a project. And they don't want crime in the suburbs. And you know, Antifa, Antifa says that's the next place they want to head. They're not heading to the suburbs. And you know what? As soon as I say those words, they want law, order, they want safety, they want to have their families be safe. And then they say about, I think we're going to do very well with suburban women. We have a lot of suburban women right here. We got rid of a regulation and Ben Carson, a great guy, said, well, sir, you know, it'd be a lot easier if we just amended it, made it a little less onerous. It's horrible. It's horrible with your zoning and they've changed your zoning and you can do whatever you want and ruin everything. I said, no, Ben, let's terminate it. Well, but if we do, it'd be easier. No, Ben, let's terminate it. Let's just terminate it. I said, uh, do it. He said, that's a tough one, but we'll do it. And we terminated it. It's gone. Now, if, if Sleepy Joe comes back, you know who's going to be in charge of it? Cory Booker is going to be in charge. <laughs> Cory Booker, the mayor of, the former mayor of Newark, New Jersey, who never lived in Newark. I don't know how he got away with that one, Mike. Never lived there. They will censor you, cancel you, and indoctrinate your children with anti-American lies. But we don't let that. We don't let that happen. You saw that two weeks ago. Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain in exchange for his party's nomination. He has handed control of his party over to the rage-filled socialists, Marxists, and left-wing extremists, right? Because Joe doesn't have a clue. Let's not kid ourselves. Joe, how you doing, Joe? Not well. Oh, I got to say, wait, wait, wait. So the polls, right? So winning 52, 
percent and 53 percent. Not bad, right? And that's national. That's almost as you know, as crazy as it is, it doesn't mean anything. Nevada, Trump is up by two. Texas, Trump is up by four, much more than four. Remember, guns, oil, and God. I'm on their side. He's on the other side. So let me ask you, maybe even more so than if a candidate is running in Texas and he said, we are against oil. I think that's it, right? But now add guns to it and now add religion. And that's what they're doing. They're closing your churches. Your churches are all closed. It's terrible. It really is terrible. Ohio, we're up big. Ohio, the great state of Ohio. We have great people in Ohio. Jim Jordan. Do we like Jim Jordan? Everyone. NCAA wrestling champ. People don't know that about Jim. You know about Jim. NCAA wrestling, a real tough guy and a great guy. Florida, we're up four. Just came out. Just came out. Rasmussen. Georgia, we're up very nicely, four or five, but we're really up much more than that. Don't forget, if we're up four, add another four, five, six, seven to it. I'm not sure I'm proud of it, but people don't want to talk about it, right? They don't want to talk, but they vote. They vote. Arizona, we're up in Arizona. We're up in Iowa. We're up big in Montana. Well, Montana, we're up really big. We're up in Utah, and we're up 22 points in West Virginia, West Virginia. Oh. But you don't hear this when you watch, because there's suppression. They want to give you negative stuff. There's suppression. They're very dishonest people, but that's okay. They were dishonest last time, too. Worse, actually, right? But you got to get out. You got to get out and vote. We got to put this thing away. We win Pennsylvania. We win the whole ball game. We win the whole ball game. So, I guess, you know, you're known as a late voting state, right? Very late, right? which is a good thing. Who is going to vote soon? Who is going to vote on November 3rd? Yeah, you're a late. One of the few, right? Yeah, you, want, you, like, you don't like a ballot sent out and then thrown into a garbage. <laughs> now, you, you know, you're known for it. It's called smart people. Who is going to vote for Sleepy Joe Biden? Only if you have the courage. Only if you have the courage to raise your hand. Please don't do it. Please don't. Who is going to vote for President Trump? All right, now we're gonna have a big, you know, they call it the great red wave and they're waiting for it. You know, all these ballots came pouring in, these crazy ballots are pouring in from all over. They send the ballots out, nobody knows who's sending them, who's receiving them, who's signing them. You know, they wanna have a thing in uh, Nevada where you don't have to prove signature, you know, minor things like that, right? But they're gonna have a wave and they're all saying about the red wave, but I think the great red wave is gonna be much bigger than people have any understanding about. I think, I think. But you hear those numbers, you don't hear those numbers when you watch the fake news, it's suppression. They want to make you nice and depressed. So you take your wife or husband, you say, you know, I really like the president, but he can't win because I listen to fake CNN or I listen to Fox. Fox, by the way, Fox has the worst polls of all and they had four years ago too. They have the worst, I said, they have the worst. You hear that John Roberts who I like a lot? They have the worst, he's right there. Hi, John. They have the worst pollster of anybody. Fox is terrible. They got it so wrong last time. But you listen to these polls and you say, let's go to dinner, darling, and then we'll go home. And sadly, we'll watch television. But you know what happened four years ago? Everyone said, no, we're not going to dinner. We're going to vote. Right? <laughs> Hillary with her statement about the deplorables, right? The deplorables. Well, the deplorables decided to vote. That was an incredible. Was that incredible when she said that? Who would have thought that was so bad? It was deplorables. She actually said a worse word than that, right? The irredeemables. Remember, she said the deplorables and the irredeemables. I thought irredeemable was worse than a deplorable, right? But it didn't catch on. The thing that caught on was deplorable. And the next day I was making a speech like this and it came out. It came out. We are deplorable. And they came out by the millions. That shirt sold like crazy. <laughs> the
The fake news, you know, every time that happens, and now it's happening with Biden because that's a crime family, frankly. But every time that happens, where they say, lock her up, lock him up, they always blame me and I have nothing to do with it. I mention a name and the place goes crazy. They said, you incited that. I said, I didn't even talk about it. You see that fake show last night, 60 Minutes? I did a good job. That was a very hostile, hostile attack by a woman that knew nothing. If Biden wins, the flag burning radicals on the streets will be running your government. You know that. Look at Portland. We want to go into Portland. So, you know, we did a great job. If you look at Seattle, we said we're going in. And the night before they said, OK, we're leaving now because, you know, we have to be asked in. The federal government has to be asked in. And then we did a great job in Minnesota, Minneapolis. I mean, they should have told us to go there a week and a half early. It would have been nice. It would have saved a lot of destruction. Remember the CNN anchor, Velchi? He said, we are here. They don't want to talk about riots because it's bad for them, you know? We are here at a peaceful demonstration. And behind him, right over here, the entire city is burning down, right? <laughs> they had a fire that looked like Berlin on its worst day. The whole place was burning down. And then he said, the military has formed what well, was, you know, well, it was a great group of people. You saw that, the National Guard. And it was one, two, three. All of a sudden they started one line, two lines. And they just marched forward, that tear gas. Didn't Velchi get hit on the knee with tear gas and he went down? They said, he's down, Velchi. I don't even know who the hell Velchi is, I just remember. Did a little shave job on his head. I was thinking about doing it. I was going to do a little, but I decided against it. I didn't want to go down 25 points in the poll. <laughs> Ali Velchi, yeah, he got hit on the knee with tear gas, right? And he went down. And he, uh, he was not the bravest guy. But I'll never forget the scene of him saying, this is a friendly protest. And behind, I'm telling you, I never saw fire like that. It was the craziest thing. But we did a great job. We sent in the National Guard and the National Guard. It was over in, what, a half hour? Max, they just started walking. World's most expensive uniforms. Their helmet costs like a giant computer. They just, and, and you know, there was something very nice about it after watching what went on for a week and a half. But all of it, we could solve it all. All they have to do is ask us. The federal government is waiting. And it's always run by Democrats. New York problem run by Democrats. Chicago problem. How do you like her as a mayor? Isn't she wonderful? Run by Democrats. All run by Democrats. This election day, the people of Pennsylvania need to defy the corrupt media, the big tech machines. And you look at what they're doing. They're protecting. They won't write anything negative about a man who is corrupt. They won't write. There is nothing they will allow to go in. And the forces trying to keep you down and hold you back. It's the most incredible thing. And I give great credit to the New York Post who endorsed me today, by the way. because they're the only one with the courage to do it, and they're out there. It's great what they're doing. You must stop the anti-American radicals from doing what they're doing. You can't let the Democrats and Joe Biden have a far-left victory. This has to be a thundering defeat, not just a defeat. It has to be a rebuke, a rebuke of socialism. And as corrupt as he is, and all the things he's done, his son is like a vacuum cleaner. Let me follow you into China, Dad. Dad, I'm going to be managing one and a half billion dollars. Have you ever done it before, son? No, I haven't, Dad. I have no idea. They've never done a deal like that. China doesn't do that. They don't give other people money to manage. But you know, the scary part is that, remember, the big guy gets 10%, right? The big guy. He's the big guy. I don't think he's the big guy. The big guy gets 10%. And the big one with China was they wanted $10 million a year for introductory purposes. So $10 million, I wonder what that was all about. That sounds like a reasonable number. Then Ukraine, 183000 a month to sit on a board of an energy company with a questionable reputation. Sit on the board, and he has absolutely no knowledge of energy. This young person sitting right here, very young, knows more about energy than where's Hunter. I call Hunter's real first name is Ware. Where's Hunter? Remember we made the t-shirt? Joe wants to send your jobs to China while his family rakes in millions and millions of dollars from the 
Chinese Communist Party. Oh, they want him to win. Can you imagine? I'm charging him billions of dollars in tariffs. Joe said he would take those tariffs off of me. Billions. I gave 28 billion to the farmers in Iowa and Nebraska, all of the farmers, because they were targeted. And Joe wants to take the tariffs off. I gave him, remember, I, I 25% dumped steel. They were killing our steel companies. 25% and our steel companies have been doing great now. If Biden wins, China wins. When we win, America wins. If I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician, if that's okay. And I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment. It's because I was elected to fight for you harder than anyone has ever fought for you before. You think this is fun? I had a good life before this. I had a nice, beautiful, I could go anywhere. I could do anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, that's a chant they say they've never, ever heard in politics. I won't repeat the chant because I don't want to cry. I'll start crying. Now they'll say, President Trump broke down in tears today. We are joined today by a couple of warriors, real warriors, and great people. These are people that have been with me day and night fighting this movement, this horrible left, radical left movement. Congressman John Joyce. <laughs> Congressman G. T. Thompson. Great people. And a man who's so popular, he was with me the other night, different location, it was about 30 degrees out, and he refused to put on a jacket. By the end of the evening, I think he regretted it, but he'd never say, he's a powerful guy, he's a great guy, he loves everybody, and they love him. Mike Kelly, Congressman Kelly. Mike. Right. As well as State Senator Judy Ward. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Great job you're doing. We built the greatest economy in history, and now we're doing it again. Make America great again, again, right? Remember? Make America great again, again. We did it, and now we got to do it again, and it's happening much faster than anybody could have believed. We increased middle-class family income over $6,000, more than five times the gains in all eight years under the last administration. It's really something, right? Did you see the crowd that President Obama had today? Nobody. Nobody showed up. I thought they'd have a little crowd. Didn't quite have a crowd like this. No, nobody showed up. They said he's going to start campaigning. I said, who? Barack Hussein Obama. I said, oh. I said, is that good or bad? Because, you know, he campaigned harder than Hillary the last time. How did that work out? It didn't work out. But he went to a few locations. He's averaging about uh, 25 people. He's averaging very little. It's disappointing. African-American unemployment, Hispanic-American unemployment, Asian-American unemployment, people with diplomas from high school, without diplomas from high school, college diplomas, MIT first in your class, everybody was employed. Women, women had the best they've had in 71 years. All reached their lowest levels ever recorded. Since April, we created a record, never happened before, 11.4 million jobs, just April. We achieved the most secure border, it's because of the wall, largely, and Mexico has 27,000 troops at our border protecting it for us. I said, you gotta do that. Good man, president of Mexico, good man. My opponent's insane immigration plan would eliminate U.S. borders by implementing nationwide catch and release. That's where you catch a killer and you release them into our country, and we say, come back in four years, you have a court case. And remember Joe at the debate, he said, oh, they come back, they don't come back. Only the ones with an extraordinarily low IQ come back. <laughs> Nobody comes back, they don't come back. We never took that one up, but remember we had a little argument about it. He said, they come back, they don't come back. Making every community a sanctuary city for violent criminals, we're not gonna do that. They want sanctuary cities for violent criminals. The Biden-Harris plan would also increase refugees 700% from the most dangerous places in the world. 
They pledged to terminate all national security travel bans. I have a travel ban. It was very tough. People didn't like it. I said, no, thank you. I don't want people that want to come into our country and blow up our stores and our streets and our people. And I put in a very strong travel ban, and we won in court. We won at the United States Supreme Court. If you don't mind. And we keep out radical Islamic terrorists. We keep them out. We invested $2.5 trillion in our U.S. military. $2.5 trillion with a T. With a T. See, Joe would say, we invested $2.5 million. He said, no, it's trillion. Oh, it is? Oh, I didn't know. You know, the worst is when he constantly is saying that, number one, he's running for the U.S. Senate. I'm a proud Democrat running for the U.S. Senate. Thank you very much. That's only happened three times. But the worst of all is when he says, like, tonight, it's great to be in the state of Ohio. No, no. Joe, you're in Pennsylvania. No, no, it's Ohio, isn't it? Or when he was in Idaho and he said, Iowa, it's great to be in Iowa. No, no, it's Idaho. Potatoes, remember, but potato. The Idaho potato. Or when he's in Miami with the trees, beautiful palm trees, and he says he's in Vermont. It's great to be in the state of Vermont. And you have palm trees all over the place. And I always say, if you ever do that when you're speaking, I haven't done it yet, think of it, in four and a half years. If you ever do that, just walk off the stage because there's nothing you can do to make up for it. You can be the great Winston Churchill. You know, he was a great orator. Winston Churchill wouldn't make any difference. They say the speech was a disaster. We also passed VA choice and VA accountability. And exactly one year ago today, we killed the leader of ISIS, bloodthirsty al-Baghdadi. And we took out the number one terrorist in the world, Soleimani, is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. Think of it, 1.5, think of it. Gave 1.8 billion in cash, $150 billion for nothing. We got nothing in that deal. In fact, the deal would be almost terminating now, short-term deal. What were they thinking of John Kerry? Remember, he went into a bicycle race, he broke his arm and his leg. I kept saying, leave the table, leave the table, get up and negotiate tough, leave the table. So he left, went in a bicycle race, he didn't come back for two months. Should have stayed out much longer than that. What a deal that was. And we terminated it. And Iran now is having a very bad time. And you know, the first person that's going to call me after we win, the heads of Iran, because they are losing a fortune. And I don't want that to happen, but they cannot have a nuclear weapon. They cannot have it. They'll call and make a deal. I said, you better wait. You better wait till after the election. Let's do it right. I recognize the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Every president said they were going to do it. Every president for decades and decades said they were going to do it. Wasn't that easy? It was tough. Once you get in there, there's a lot of opposition you get to doing it. But we did it. We got it done after many, many years. Instead of never-ending wars, we're forging peace in the Middle East. No cost and no blood, right? No cost and no blood. Now it's amazing. They're amazing. You saw three countries now, and we have countries lined up to get in the deal. And they all said, you couldn't do it this way. I reversed it because it wasn't working. I reversed it. And we just did Sudan, UAE, Bahrain, and there's a lot of countries. They'll all be in there. They'll all be in. No blood in the sand. No blood, Mike. No blood in the sand. No cost, no nothing. They've been fighting that stuff for so many years. They all want to see if they can do something. A vote for Republicans is a vote and I mean truly a vote for the Republican. It's a vote for the American dream, if you think about it. It's the American dream. It's the American dream. You know, with the party of Abraham Lincoln, a lot of people don't know that. The great Abraham Lincoln, the man that I've always competed against, I said, I can be more presidential than any president ever. 
except for the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln when he's wearing the hat. That's tough. I can be, actually. It'd be easy. Much easier than what I do. It'd be much easier, but we wouldn't have quite this audience, which goes back to a point where you can't even see it. I'd love to have the cameras show it, but they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. They don't want to show it. I don't want to show this crowd because it'll look like we're having too much success and they don't want that. So in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world and we will end our reliance on China. We're already doing it. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. Second Amendment. Your Second Amendment under siege, but we've got it. We've got it okay for you. We, we will end, end surprise, surprise medical, medical billing, require, require price, price transparency. transparency. A big, a big deal. It's already signed. Goes into effect on January 1st. Bigger than health care. You watch. Lower, Lower drug, drug prices, prices even, even more, more, and we, we will, will always protect, protect patients with pre-existing conditions, always. <laughs> right? They agree. We will, we will stop, stop the radical, the radical indoctrination, indoctrination of our students, students and, and restore patriotic, patriotic education, education to our schools. <laughs> We're already there. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. Always. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Pennsylvania. Standing up. For the last four years, you have seen me fight for you. And now I am relying on you to deliver another historic victory for our country. On November 3rd or sooner, we must finish the job and drain the swamp. It's deeper and more vicious than we thought. But we got them on the run. Boy, do we have them on the run. Think of it, they spied on our campaign. It's our campaign. They spied what they did to us. And this new one is just incredible. I say it's number two. Number one, they spied on our campaign. And then they tried to harm a duly elected president. And then they talk about peaceful transition. Now, what we did, and the fact that we were able to catch him and fight him and beat him, and we know everything about him, watch what happens. Just watch what happens. Get your friends. Get your family. Get your neighbors. Get your co-workers. And get out to vote. You got to vote. You got to get out to vote. From Allentown to Altoona, from Erie to East, and from Pittsburgh to right here in Martinsburg, we stand with the show. You like this location? We stand on the shoulders of Pennsylvania patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this beloved nation. This is the state where our founding fathers declared American independence. Think of Pennsylvania. Think of what you've done. Think of how important it is. It's where the Army weathered its brutal winter at Valley Forge. Where General George Washington, they will not be touching the Washington Monument, I promise. Led his men on a daring mission across the Delaware, and where our union was saved by the heroes of Gettysburg. What history. This is the this place, is the where, place generations where generations of tough, tough strong, strong Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania workers mined the coal, worked the railroads, work the railroads and forged, forged the steel that made America, America into the greatest, the greatest and most powerful, powerful nation in the history, in the history of the world. world. And, we and we are making, are making it, stronger it stronger and stronger every stronger single every day. day. Proud Proud citizens, citizens like you help build, help build this country, country. And, together and together we are, we are taking, taking back, back our country. country. 
We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Pennsylvania, we have made America powerful again. Our military has never been a military like we have. We have made America wealthy again. 401ks, stock market. We have made America strong again. We have, we have made, made America, America proud, proud again. again. We, we have, have made, made America, America safe again. again. And, and we, we will, will make America, America great, great again. again. Thank, Thank you, Pennsylvania. You. Thank you very much. Thank you.